me fade this out and tell them why I'm doing that. <laughs> All right, so I have Pat Brady on Skype with me, so I'm gonna go ahead and fade this song out, and I will play the rest of it later because I don't like not giving him his full airtime. I think that artist is awesome. I hope you guys were enjoying that song, but you know, live phone calls take precedence. So, um, let's talk to Pat Brady. Hey, Pat. Hey, Steph. I think everybody Hi, can hear you. I'm excited. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, let me hop Hello. into the chat room. Yep, yeah, okay, they can hear you. So. Okay, thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much for giving me your time three weeks in a row trying to get this done. I know, but this time I had to borrow Bob's laptop since the agency I worked for, the Skype we have is like so, you know, big satellite-y between the two offices. I could never do a personal one. So I gave Bob a brand new MacBook Pro for Christmas because he's going to be in your town for six weeks starting next week uh, negotiating the Screen Actors Guild contract so he and I can Skype oh, on the big cool. computer at home. And, I, and he'll have this one. So I said to him this morning, I go, honey, I want that laptop back. <laughs> what? Well, no, I've got, I've got to take it with me because I'm Skyping with Stephanie. For the fans who are watching this, my husband, Bob Joles, is the voiceover for Starkid. He's the future is now in Starship. And he is the narrator in a very Potter musical senior year. Yeah, that, it was very cool hearing him do that. I thought it was awesome that that was how they were doing the transitions during senior year. They hired a pro. <laughs> I wonder how they got that connection. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> Lucky guy. Um, anybody else who's curious about Pat's husband should go on IMDb and see all the voice stuff that he's done, because he's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's Sneezy of the Seven Dwarves. That's his big call to fame, and he just did Rob Paulson. If you guys haven't listened to it, uh, Talking Tunes with Rob Paulson is an amazing podcast. And he just had my husband on. So, you know, Rob Paul's an animaniac, that guy. Um, I remember... So hit me, hit me. <laughs> well, let's talk about your relationship with Team Star Kid. How okay. did that start? Well, Darren, um, when he was a senior at the University of Michigan, during his spring break, had made an appointment to meet with Melissa Berger, who's one of our theatrical agents, who was also a graduate from the University of Michigan. And he met with her, and they really, really liked each other, and he decided to come with our agency. So when he came back in in June, he, she said, well, what did you do your last sem semester of school? And he goes, well, my friends and I did this thing called Harry Potter the Musical, and we just put it up on YouTube last night. And she said, well, that's funny. There's a senior agent down the hall as a Harry Potter fanatic. I'll have her watch it. So I watched it, and I thought it was great, and I called Darren the next morning, and I said... Okay, buddy, I need you and the creators in my office. Look, because Matt and Nick were there, and Brian Holden was there. And uh, who was, somebody else came into the meeting. Oh, uh, I think it was Eric Congale came into the meeting. And they all came in, and I said, guys, this was pure brilliance. I love it. But if you don't take this down, you'll owe Warner Brothers your firstborn child. They will sue your effing pants off. Get it down. Take it down now. And so they were, like, shocked. They had no idea. So what happened was is that um, they took it down. I'm sure you guys have all seen the video, like, don't sue us video, which is very cute. <laughs> and the next day, Darren got a call from Warner Brothers, and he said, uh, uh, talk to our agent. And her name's Pat Brady, and here's her number. And Warner Brothers called me, and they just basically said, if you told them to take it down, that was the smartest thing you could have done because we were all ready to go after them. And I said, believe me, it was just... Is nothing they ever profited from because Warner Brothers didn't know if they sold tickets or made any money off of it, which they hadn't. Right. And so, you know, after you know, I've gone to law school for six years. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So, had a great conversation with the lawyer, took care of it, and the boys just said, "Okay, you, do you want to work for us?" And I said, "In a heartbeat." And they've been mine ever since. That's really lucky for them. <laughs> well, it's really lucky for me because. I mean, I'm a mom and everything, and I'm a grandma and the whole bit, but these are my babies now. And Darren, you know, he was, you know, he was with the agency, and then Melissa got him on um, Eastwick, and then she got him on Glee. So, you know, he's, he's lucky, we're lucky, 
I love my children. <laughs> and now, um, you've basically, you've had them for the three years, so there's been tours and there's been shows, and I do remember I, when Starship came out, there was some conversations about Broadway. Is any of that still a possibility? You know, it really is. It's, it re truly is. We, um, Star uh, Starship was such an involved production, and a very, it was our first time of really spending money, and we spent a great deal of money on that show. And we did not make a great deal of money on the show until we started selling it on DVD. And then, when, then we recouped back our money. But believe me, you know, there was, there's $35,000 worth of puppets on that stage. It, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful production. But it has to be cut. Yeah. And my guys are more of move forward, not look back kind of guys. And so they will eventually take take it apart and put it back together again so it'll be ready for the Broadway stage. But we've had we're very lucky. We've had a lot of theaters very interested in it. A lot of Broadway producers absolutely love it. They're willing to wait until we figure out what we want to do with it because it is so good. That's awesome. <laughs> I would love to see it on Broadway. You know oh, that I'm God. selfish. Anytime they're in New York, I'm a happy girl. So <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Steph. I mean, I have been an agent for 33 years. The highlight, the highlight of my career was booking Darren on Broadway because I went. I, I got my degree in musical theater. I wanted to leave Los Angeles and come and be on Broadway. I wanted to be the character actress on Broadway, but you know, those who cannot do agent. So uh, <laughs> I never got that far. But boy, booking a lead in a Broadway show that was the tip of the iceberg for me. I just, I could not have been more thrilled. Do you see any of them getting to Broadway in the next few years? Is that on the table for anybody? I don't know. I mean, they're all doing so well. Um, Joey is just kicking ass and taking names. He's doing so well. Um, Moses, my gosh, Moses has been, you know, Moses is on a callback right now as we speak for a national commercial, and I hope he gets it. And uh, he just did a national voiceover, which I'm not allowed to talk about. And so they're, they're all doing really well out here. But if I had my way, they we they'd all be on Broadway. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, Jamie has a real good shot at it because of her pipes. She's got great pipes. And of course, look at a AJ's and I'll put money. AJ will be the next one. Yeah. Who goes. Um, have you heard about the Aladdin musical coming to Broadway in next oh, year? Of course. No, I, um, I'm proud to say I rep Johnny Tartaglia. Okay. And Johnny did the out of town of it. And I don't have him theatrically, obviously, but I have him for voiceover. And I hope that he does it. It is not, I'm sure, the rumor, the Star Kid rumor about our Aladdin show. It, there's no conflict of interest whatsoever. Oh, I hadn't heard that Star Kid was working talking on Aladdin. We're talking about an Aladdin type of show, but it has, it has nothing to do with what's going on Broadway. So, of course, you want Darren to play Aladdin. Well, that's pretty much what people are asking me right now in the chat room. <laughs> see, see, the down the downside about putting Darren in an in Aladdin is that he would have to be committed to the to do at least a six month run. His him doing three weeks in How to Succeed was perfect in every way, shape, and form because he got to do it while he was on vacation from Glee. And God love Ryan Murphy, he held off. And, as you well know, wrote a scenario where they weren't going to see Darren for two weeks on the show. Can't do that again. That's, you know, we went to that well once. I don't think we're going to be able to do a six-month there. But, you know what? By the time it comes, who knows? You know, I, I mean, he's under contract to Glee, so I don't think he's going to abandon Glee to do Aladdin. Well, you know, it's a year away. <laughs> exactly. We can dream, can't we? But, you know, who knows? If somebody had told him three years ago that he was going to be who he is, he wouldn't have believed it. So yeah. he could be a Latin in a year. Who knows? Well, you know, the interview that I did with him back in 2010, months before Glee, he was saying, I'm just a broke actor out in L.A. with a broken refrigerator and all the other stuff. So, yeah, he had no idea. Oh, he had no idea. And neither did his parents. <laughs> and neither did his brother. You know, they. I mean, this all... This all came so fast, and it couldn't happen to a nicer kid. 